And besides things that obviously connect to hormones, there are several other chemicals that can potentially affect the endocrine system. A number of chemicals occur commonly as pollution. <clears throat> there are some that are used very extensively in making plastics. Uh, your standard cash register tape contains bisphenol A, that's a significant endocrine disruptor. A variety of drugs, whether they are things illegal and appropriate to be taking under prescription, as well as a number of illegal recreational drugs <clears throat> have effects there. Uh, some types of herbal supplements can have these effects, certain metals. Some of these happen to be just the right shaped molecule to bind to a receptor. And so the body thinks it's getting a dose of hormone when really it's some random other thing. Or they may cause damage. A lot of the metals, it's not that the metal resembles the hormone, but that it can mess up either the <clears throat> endocrine gland that's producing the hormone or one receiving it. And no surprise, you mess with the hormones, you get messed up responses like the poor frog with extra legs there. <clears throat> so you have issues with development, <clears throat> not developing properly. You've got tissue that shouldn't have grown a leg that did grow a leg there. Uh, likewise, gender, there are a variety of chemicals affecting sexual development. Uh, for example, <clears throat> terpule 10 is <clears throat> historically a popular chemical to add to boat paint because things like barnacles do not like it. And so you paint your boat with this and, and of course, color is whatever you like your boat to look like in there as well. And you don't have to scrape your boat nearly as much because stuff isn't growing on it. But the terpedo tin is getting out into the water and it tends to mess up the reproductive development of animals living in the water. Uh, for example, female snails exposed to terpenoid 10 will grow parts that females aren't supposed to have and will not be able to reproduce properly. <clears throat> um, another example of impacts, there are various drugs that people legally or illegally take and <clears throat> getting those in, uh, typically you're, say, swallowing a pill, something like that. And what you swallow, well, a fair amount of it is coming out the other end. Into the sewer system and into the creeks and rivers and things like that. And often the sewer processing <clears throat> is not designed to handle all these types of chemicals, and a lot of them go on into <coughs> the water beyond. So water around big cities <coughs> tends to have noticeable levels of stuff like, say, cocaine <coughs> in it. Uh, also, even more legitimate uses, you have things like, say, birth control pills are typically <coughs> female hormones <clears throat> triggering particular patterns of response in the reproductive system. But taking that, that does mean that <clears throat> more of that hormone, besides what's actually signaling you and <clears throat> saying to not get pregnant, goes on through the body out into the sewage system. And there it is affecting things living there. And say if some male frog is there and it's getting these female hormones from the water, that may affect its reproduction. What effects are these having on people? Well, you can't ethically just take a bunch of people and dose them with a bunch of chemicals to see what happens. <clears throat> so it's not very thoroughly documented just how it works. Now you do have individual instances, say, <clears throat> somebody <clears throat> decides to use loads and loads of <clears throat> some <clears throat> herbal skincare thing <clears throat> on 
<coughs> their boy, and uh, whether he's got nice skin, well, that's a matter of judgment, but the shape of it is getting inappropriate for a boy in the chest region. Uh, yeah, that's a problem. <coughs> but it's not something you can readily experiment on. However, all sorts of animals are showing similar patterns here. There's not a good reason to think that humans wouldn't. There have been some studies suggesting that people <coughs> whose blood shows higher levels of uh, some of these chemicals <coughs> have mm, higher levels of problems associated with these. So it's definitely an issue environmentally affecting us as well as other types of life. Okay, so endocrine, hormones, regulating longer term things. And one very important area that hormones regulate is reproduction. The reproductive system, that's the last of our 11 major organ systems. Of course, this was a basic feature of living things way back at the beginning of class that we noted. Reproducing. Animals have a variety of possible strategies, different types do different things. There are trade-offs. <clears throat> One method will have certain advantages and disadvantages. And so, Different things work for different ones. <clears throat> in humans and all other animals, that matter, the patterns of sexual reproduction are regulated by several different hormones. Sexual reproduction has certain advantages and disadvantages. Asexual reproduction occurs also quite widely in animals, not quite as prevalent as sexual. <clears throat> there are relatively few animal groups that <coughs> are exclusively asexually reproduction and quite a few that are exclusively sexually reprodu reproduction reproducing that say it right <coughs> asexual reproduction happens in a few different ways <coughs> sometimes cutting up an individual they do grow into new ones. So a fragment can grow into a new full animal. Now, of course, that does not work with people. Uh, it's <clears throat> typically in organisms that have a somewhat less complex body structure. Also, asexual reproduction can occur by budding, where a specific piece grows and divides off, or individuals can basically divide, so just randomly chopping them up doesn't work, but this particular bud branching off can become a new individual. A rather different type of asexual reproduction is parthenogenesis. <clears throat> in this, we have an egg that grows into a new individual, just like you do for sexual reproduction. It's just that that egg was not fertilized by <clears throat> a male parent. So the female, well, lays an egg or gives birth, depending on what sort of creature we're looking at, <clears throat> without a male having fertilized the egg. And yes, there is at least one group of things <clears throat> that has an almost <clears throat> male parthenogenic. It's not completely, but getting close to that. <clears throat> Here's an example, this is Hydra, you may remember it. We had them to look at way back in the lab, a little tiny cnidarian jellyfish and coral relative. Hydras are able to reproduce asexually and sexually. So you see labeled here, here's an egg, <clears throat> which can be fertilized for sexual reproduction. The little bump here is not labeled, but it looks suspiciously that, like that might be a, a testis. This Hydra is hermaphrodite, that's male and female. But here's this little hydra growing off as a bud. <clears throat> so that would be a clone of the one here. And it can eventually split itself off from the parent and live on its own. Of course, hydra is pretty simple. You can <clears throat> cut a relatively small piece of a hydra and it will grow into a new one as well. <clears throat> 